First of all, let me welcome all of you very warmly to the seat of the presidency of our country, to Jubilee House, and also to express my gratitude to thank you for responding so very quickly to my invitation for us to have this meeting. I've been meeting various constituencies in the country, but consultations across the nation could not be complete without also uh, meeting and talking with the political leaders of our nation, especially at this critical moment when we are, like all the countries of the world, having to confront this new menace to the survival of our population and its health and welfare. And it is essential for us to have an opportunity to exchange information with each other. And more than anything else, to agree on the measures that we can take as political leaders to ensure the unity of our nation at this critical time and to stress the need for solidarity amongst ourselves. Because the example of our own country, the example of countries around the world which we're all familiar with, the disease doesn't have a political color. It doesn't know Democrats or Republicans or Tories or Labour or NDC or MPP. It's attacking human beings. And I think that that recognition is what should drive our collective response as a people to this pandemic. So this is the reason I called you. We are not well, some of us certainly are not technical people, are not doctors, we are not in a position to give long exegesis on the origins of the disease or the measures that can be taken to be. But we are community leaders, we are political leaders. And the, the threat that abounds in this virus is a threat to our communities, to our society, to our nation. And we should be able collectively to find an input as to the measures that on a social societal basis that can be taken to arrest the spread and ultimately lead to the defeat of this pandemic. So once again, let me welcome you and thank you for coming this afternoon. Thank you for the opportunity and to state that we couldn't agree with you more than the pandemic has no political correlation. And for that matter, as a nation, we need to come together to put our shoulders to the wheel and to see how best all of us will assist the effort the government is putting in place to fight and defeat the pandemic because we ought to defeat it. We should not allow ourselves to be defeated by this pandemic. And I believe that the Almighty God has blessed us with the necessary resources, human, material, and everything, to be able to work together in these very trying times to ensure that we defeat the pandemic. Your Excellency, I, uh, after my uh, statement, will present a copy of our, our technical team uh, paper that they have developed uh, to you. Already, I think one has been sent to the, uh, the Minister for Information, but once we are here, we'll send you a copy. We have detailed out a number of suggestions and a number of interventions that we believe uh, will help the efforts you have already started uh, putting in place to address the urgent challenges facing the country, not the country alone, but uh, the global community. I want to thank you for the opportunity and to assure you of our readiness to support your efforts in every respect that is needed. Ghana first, and we need to save ourselves. Thank you once again for the opportunity. Mr. President, colleague political leaders, as has been said over the past few months, we have only one country and let's together be behind our president and his government to ensure that this virus wouldn't do as much damage as it's being done to many, 
even very, very developed economies. Mr. President, once again, I want to say you, the Vice President, your Chief of Staff, and all who are gathered here, thank you very much. I'd like, first of all, to commend you, Mr. President, on the work you're doing, and, of course, the government, and all that is going on with COVID-19. We are quite happy. Um, we have, nobody has been here before, nobody in the world, which is an amazing thing, because um, probably the last time the world had to face a pandemic like this, nobody in here was born. So we are all in a new place. We are all in a place of learning, and we are all in a place of growth. And no one here can claim to know how to do it better than anybody else. We are all learning as we go along. So I would like to commend you for what you've done so far. Um, the quarantining of those people on the flights, um, the lockdown, um, not very pleasant, but we have to all go through it. Um, Maybe I should have started and said that I bring you compliments from Dr. Papakwesiendum, who has not been able to come back because uh, he was also um, stuck in the U.S. when he, around the time that the flights were banned, so he wasn't able to come back. Um, he would like you to know that he has some seven um, ambulances in a um, bonded warehouse, if you would want to make use of it. There's nothing like too, many, too much meat in the soup right now. So um, if you would like to, he will put it at your disposal so you can use it for your efforts to fight COVID-19. Um, as I said, most of us haven't been here and I'd like to take this opportunity especially to speak to our friends in the other political parties. It's a difficult place to be and you find that, particularly on social media, there's a lot of um, comparing and contrasting, competitiveness, and uh, I did it better and all that, or I know how to do it. Frankly, we've, not, we've all not been there, so this is not the time to compete. I would like to say to us that let's make an effort at taking off our competitive blinders and put on our compassionate lenses because at this point, it's this compassion we need. Indeed, there are people in Abogloshi, there are people on the streets, and if we want to count them, um, some of us political parties would like to be the ones to solve all the problems for them. Some of us seem to think we know how to do it. Some of us think we've been there before and uh, we could have done it better. We don't know. This is not the time to you know, bring up our differences. This is the time for us to come together and actually show compassion. And it is obvious if you are working to show, if you are working with competition, that energy is put out there and it is seen. And if you are working with compassion, that energy also can be seen by others. So let's bring up that compassionate side and use it instead of the competitive side. Thank you very much. It is a great um, uh, pleasure and we are grateful to have been invited here today for us to deliberate with you and your government about ways and solutions we can find to, number one, stopping the spread of this terrible virus and hopefully also eradicating it from Ghana altogether. In fact, we have all been witnesses to the speed with which it has run around the world. And we have also been witnesses to how some governments perhaps have been slow or hesitant or in some instances prevaricated about the important decisions they should have made. Fortunately, this is not a charge which your government, Mr. President, can be accused of. I think your decisions thus far have been decisive, resolute, and very important. I say this from a personal perspective, because if one takes a look at those who were brought into the country recently on quarantine, and the number of those who were found positive, 
That itself is a testimony to that very important decision. We wish you well, and we offer you our assistance, and we are most grateful for being offered the opportunity to be here today. I stand on behalf of my party to thank you for this uh, gesture that you have uh, invited all of us to come and deliberate on this issue. Um, it shows your desire to unite the country at a critical time when, in fact, unity is what will see us through. Because without unity, this virus can devastate us. We would like to thank the president for the actions taken so far. And indeed, the actions have been very timely and purposeful to the COVID-19 pandemic that we all have to fight. Mr. President, thank you very much for bringing us here, giving us the opportunity, leading this country in a way that we are all happy about. Thank you. Thank you very much.